The Allfather is a fascinating figure in Norse mythology. He seeks knowledge to avoid dying in Ragnarok. However, the God of War series takes a darker approach to him, making him more evil, similar to how Zeus was portrayed. So how bad is he? And how is his evilness depicted in God of War Ragnarok? With torture, murder, and slavery, it's safe to say Odin is pretty evil. Here are the worst things he's ever done. Starting us off, the torture of Mimir. Torturing someone is wrong, but Mimir's situation is even more complicated complicated. Odin and Mimir are no longer friends or partners in crime, as the Allfather refers to them. But Mimir is one of those guys who is too helpful to kill. He is highly knowledgeable, and his knowledge may come in handy someday. As a result, Mimir met the tree. He is ultimately in prison. He can't move anything below his neck. He claimed that he was tortured every day until Kratos arrived. And because the tree completely encased his body, the only solution was to remove his head and revive it with Freya's hell. They weren't sure if bringing the head back was possible, but Mimir's situation was so dire that death was also a viable option, at least better than remaining in the tree. He's only a head now, a prison in and of itself, but he considers it an improvement over the tree and the torture he endured. That was how bad things were, all because of Odin. At number two, the death of the giants. While Thor could be blamed for this, the giant hunting business began with Odin. He desired the ability to see into the future, which the giants were famous for, so he could learn all about Ragnarok and how to prevent it. And the giants were hesitant to reveal their secrets, especially since they were already aware of the Aesir's threat due to their foresight. A war erupted between these factions, resulting in the near extinction of the giants. The survivors are only Loki, Angerboda, and Jormungandr. The remaining few are only souls. Moving on, Svartalfheim. Odin and Mimir use deception to force the dwarves to submit to the Aesir, thereby gaining control of Svartalfheim. The reasons for this were more technical. Dwarves were masters of the craft, making them powerful allies, and their lands possessed unique resources. Taking over Svartalfheim ensured that all of these resources and labor would be in Odin's favor rather than the Vanir gods, who had numerous reasons to dislike Odin. This is why Mimir is so intent on liberating as much of Svartal fame as possible. Though part of it stems from his guilt, there were rebellions to free the dwarves, but they were unsuccessful. Whatever the case, a man who enslaves an entire realm is not someone you want to be around. Following that, using the people of Midgard as fodder. Ragnarok is on its way. You have no control over it at this point. You're well aware that enemies will soon surround your domain. What are you going to do? Of course, you surround yourself with people. What appeared to be a kind gesture became a heinous war strategy. When Atreus arrives in Asgard, he noticed many Midgardians living outside the walls. They were allegedly brought there to avoid dying of cold from Fimble Winter, which makes you wonder if Odin isn't all that bad. During Ragnarok, we see most of these people caught in the crossfire of everything that is happening. Atreus even attempts to close his heart to what is happening, as he was taught, but Kratos intervenes, demonstrating that even the former god of war can be more merciful than the All-Father. As we progress, let's not forget Odin and Thor. Both Norse saga games strongly emphasize the role of a parental figure. Kratos is too afraid to be emotional with his son. Baldur has a complicated mother-son relationship, and Magni and Modi are two evil children. When familial relationships aren't ideal, these relationships show us what people can become. But Thor personifies it even more. Imagine Kratos remaining God's servant until today. That is essentially what Thor is, broken on the inside, simply following Odin's commands out of a combination of obedience to your father, because he is your father, and pure fear of him. Thor is spared after defeating Kratos. Kratos no longer wants to be a god killer and doesn't want to kill Thor's father because he trusts him. Thor then realizes he must oppose his father, and as he attempts to do so in conversation, Odin kills him without hesitation. A truly heartbreaking moment and evidence of how far Odin is willing to go to achieve his goals. In a story where the protagonist aspires to be a better father, the antagonist is the worst father, murdering his son in cold blood. As a bonus, you could argue that Odin's treatment of all of his family members is despicable in and of itself. He only cares about those who are helpful to him. He was utterly dismissive of Magda.
Magni and Modi's deaths because they were useless, and he killed Thor when he realized he would no longer follow him. Last on our list, we have everything he did to Freya. This entry is so bad that it could be on its own list. Starting a war against her people is reason enough not to like someone, but then she was forced to marry Odin to bring peace between the Aesir and the Vanir. Everything worked well at first, but it didn't last. He manipulated her into learning Vanir's magic, and he became a despicable figure when he couldn't fool her anymore. Because Odin used an alleged cure for his curse as a manipulation device, their son Baldur essentially became his puppet. The Allfather then banished Freya to Midgard, using a series of spells to ensure she couldn't leave the realm or harm any other creature, rendering her defenseless and reliant on others for protection. Fortunately, she could avoid these spells, but removing her from her home, whose people believe she had abandoned them for the Aesir, only made matters worse for her and the Vanir. Do you remember the deadly Valkyries? Odin did this out of spite for Freya, another heinous act to enrage our goddess. Moving on, both the MCU and Marvel Comics, Gore have killed more gods than Kratos. Gore in the MCU has a different backstory than Gore in the comics, giving Kratos a better fighting chance. But both Gores have an implied kill count that is orders of magnitude higher than Kratos's. Zeus's appearance for Valkyrie to use his thunderbolt against Gore informs viewers that Gore has interacted with the same Greek gods Kratos has already killed. Gore, on the other hand, can implode a planet by impaling it with his necro sword. Regardless of Kratos' might, Gore the God Butcher has killed more gods, traversing all of time and space, whereas Kratos has killed only a few deities from the Greek and Norse pantheons. Players accompanied Kratos as he interacted with a subset of the Greek pantheon before his adventures with Atreus in Norse mythology. Santa Monica has confirmed that God of War Ragnarok will conclude Kratos' adventures with Norse mythology. On the other hand, Gore has tortured and slaughtered many deities, time gods, celestials, and even Galactus himself. While killing a god is still difficult, God of War Ragnarok's Kratos has a long way to go before he can match Gore's kill count, even if more of his god butchering carnage is shown on screen. Following that, the Vanaheim Crater reveals more about Fey in God of War Ragnarok. The main problem with Vanaheim Crater's late appearance is the extra context it provides for Fey. Kratos' late wife, Faye, is an actual figure in Norse tradition in G.O.W. Ragnarok, but Kratos himself does not appear in real mythology. She is arguably the driving force behind both recent G.O.W. games, as it was her intention for Kratos and Atreus to travel together following her death. The story of Ragnarok reveals how deep Faye's plans go, but the specific nature of her character isn't discussed. However, while investigating the Vanaheim crater, Kratos comes across the souls of many Vanheim residents who were killed when the crater was formed. According to their stories, the crater and its iconic frozen lightning bolt were created in an epic battle between Fey and Thor. Thor's story is one of tragedy and loss in God of War Ragnarok and it is no different here. The power of their duel wreaked havoc on Vanaheim, even though neither warrior could be considered the victor once the dust settled. These stories are significant because they cast Faye in a very different light than the main story. Faye is witty and fiery in flashbacks with Kratos, but also clearly kind, loving and empathetic. The Vanaheim creator revealed that she was also an incredible warrior, as only one other character can compete with Thor in a head-to-head -head fight, Kratos himself. Faye's challenge to Thor demonstrates how far she was willing to go to break free from Odin's control in G.O.W. Ragnarok. Finally, Tony Soprano fits well in the world of God of War. Eli handled B.Waf's recent edit of Tony Soprano in God of War 2018 is just the latest of their attempts to incorporate popular characters from movies and television into video games, as they have previously done with Mr. Bean in Cyberpunk 2077 and Austin Powers in Mass Effect. In the meantime, modders have reimagined Kratos as Rick Sanchez from Rick and Morty, Homer Simpson, and even God of War director Corey Barlock. Viewers praised Eli's handle B.Wav in the comments section of their latest video, praising how seamlessly Tony Soprano's footage was edited into scenes from God of War, and the overall novel concept of inserting the New Jersey crime boss into the cold and barren land of Midgard. Tony looks right at home among God of War's snow-covered forest and brutal action, and 
and his interactions with other characters feel natural, thanks to the clips chosen. Now that God of War Ragnarok has been out for a while and has become one of the fastest selling PlayStation games of all time, there will almost certainly be plenty more fun, fan-made crossovers with other games, TV shows, and movies in the future. Meanwhile, it appears that Tony Soprano may be plotting a mob war with Odin and the gods of Asgard, which could lead to the world's end. What are your thoughts on our video as the video concludes? Is there anything we missed on Odin's worst things? Please tell us in the comments section. Make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons on your way out. Until next time!